the rules of YX summary writing and how to avoid the penalties for wrong answers. That is the focus of today's lesson. And if you are new to this channel, make sure you subscribe to the channel because we upload new videos every week teaching you different areas of proficiency in the use of English. Also, click on the bell icon so that whenever I upload a new video, you will be notified instantly. I am Benjamin from English Classes Online. Let's dive into the lesson right away. In this lesson, we are going to discuss the following. Number one, what is YX summary writing all about? Number two, the YX rules for summary writing and the penalties for wrong answers. Three, how to comply with each rule and avoid the penalties. That's really very important. Once you comply with the rules, you avoid the penalties for wrong answers. What is YX summary writing all about? A summary is a brief statement of the main ideas in a passage or text. So in YX summary writing, students are given a passage and they are asked to summarize the passage in a specified number of sentences. You may be given a passage of two pages less or more and you are asked to summarize the passage in five sentences, in four sentences, in six sentences, as the case may be. Now, when summarizing a text, your focus should be on reducing words rather than increasing them. In writing essay, you develop paragraphs, writing more and more. In summary writing, you are expected to pick only the main ideas and shorten the whole thing. Now, what is key then is your ability to identify the main ideas in the passage, extract them and pre present them precisely in your own words. This is very important. Rules for YX summary writing and penalties for wrong answers. Let's uh, have a quick rundown of these rules. Number one, Deduct half mark for each grammatical or expression error in each correct answer. Two, deduct one mark for each of irrelevant, extraneous, or unnecessary material in each scoring answer. Three, for every correct answer that is not written in a sentence, award half of the marks and impose other penalties where necessary. Four, where a preamble taken with the different answers does not make a sentence, award half marks. This is without prejudice to any deduction for any grammatical or expression error and irrelevant or extraneous material. Then let's go to number five. Where a candidate engages in mindless lifting, award zero. This is a serious issue, and we are going to explain how you can remedy this, how you can avoid this. Six, where two points are made in one sentence, award marks for one and regard the other as irrelevant. Seven, if the candidate writes more than the required number of sentences, mark the required number of sentences only. Now let's begin to look at this one by one. Now, grammatical slash expression error. This is the first don't, you know, is against the rule for you to commit a grammatical or expression error. Now the penalty, as we earlier saw, is to deduct half mark for each grammatical or expression error in each correct answer. You may get the answer correctly, but because you have committed a grammatical error, you lose half, half a mark for each grammatical error. 
So this is why a lot of students uh, score low marks in summary writing. If you understand this secret, this this uh, these keys, these points, then you will do exceedingly well in summary writing. Now the remedy is to avoid bad English. You must use correct English. Okay. Now avoid grammatical errors including errors in tenses where you are supposed to use the present tense you use the past and where you should use the past you use the future and so on and so forth you must avoid that spelling errors capitalization you know where you should use capital letters for example for proper nouns you use small letters and for beginning a sentence you must use a capital letter for example a sentence in English can be defined orthographically. Orthographic, orth, orth, orthography has to do with the science of writing. So orthographically, a sentence can be defined as a group of words that begins with a capital letter and ends with an end mark, which could be a full stop, a question mark, or an exclamation mark. Now, obey the rules of concord. Now, the rules of concord begin with number one, a singular subject requires a singular verb and a plural subject requires a plural verb. Now, take this as an example. The boys was playing in the field. You see how ungrammatical it sounds because you have broken the rule of concord. This is a, a plural subject, the boys. And then you use a singular verb, you have broken the rule of concord. And so if you do this in your summary writing, you lose uh, marks, okay? Now make sure you use appropriate words in their right places, okay? That is about grammatical and expression error now irrelevant extraneous or unnecessary material the penalty is as follows deduct one mark for each inclusion of irrelevant extraneous or unnecessary material in each scoring answer now the remedy is as follows avoid modifiers examples illustrations and repetitions these are you know, unnecessary in summary writing, okay? Now, use the word reduction methods to weed out or remove irrelevant words. I am going to show you examples, but you can also browse through this channel. You can use the playlist for summary writing and you will find a video that I have uploaded that discusses various methods of reducing words, okay? Now, let's take these examples. Your own bag is green in color, but my own is blue in color. You have 14 words. There are a lot of unnecessary, irrelevant, or extraneous words there. So we can rewrite this by removing the unnecessary uh, words, okay? Yes, of course, we can rewrite by removing the unnecessary. Let me see. Let's underline the unnecessary words here. Your own bag, own, can be removed green in color. It's tautological. Once you say the bag is green, there's no need putting in color. Again, own can be removed here. In color can also be removed here. And then what we have will be the correct summary. Your bag is green, but mine is blue, okay? So that is exactly uh, how you can remove uh, unnecessary words. Now let's look at another example. It is an indisputable fact that Henry was killed by electric current. A lot of unnecessary words. In fact, we can rewrite this 
sentence of 12 words in three words only. And this is how we can do it. Henry was electrocuted, you see. So it is an indisputable fact that is unnecessary. It, it doesn't, it, it, it's, it's not doing any good job there. So you can weed it out. Henry was killed by electric current. Somebody killed by electric current is said to be electrocuted. So a single word can replace killed by electric current. So you simply say Henry was electrocuted. So you see, now let's take another example. The man who spoke to us at the seminar didn't make his voice loud enough for everybody to hear what he was saying. We can rewrite the 23 words in 10 words as follows. The speaker at the assembly was inaudible. Somebody, if somebody is saying something and people can't hear, then he is inaudible. And of course, you can weed out a lot of other words which we have done. The man who spoke to us can be described as a speaker. So there are different ways you can replace, you know, unnecessary words, cut them out, and then use one main word to replace quite a number of them. So we are now going to the third rule, incomplete, incomplete sentences or incomplete expressions, if you like. Now, the penalty is as follows. For every correct answer that is not written in a sentence, award half of the marks and impose other penalties where necessary. This is because when you write your answers in phrases or in subordinate clauses, you are breaking the rule. You are directly disobeying the instruction because you are instructed to present your answers in sentences. Okay? So one of the rules of summary writing in YA is that you are to present your answers in the required number of sentences. So the remedy is to make sure that you present each answer with a complete sentence. Avoid presenting answers in single words, in phrases, or in subordinate clauses. Because when you do that, you lose marks. Okay? So now let's move on. The rule number four, the wrong use of a preamble. The penalty is as follows. Where a preamble taken with the different answers does not make a sentence, award half marks. This is without prejudice to any deduction for any grammatical or expression error and irrelevant or extraneous material, okay? Now, the remedy is to use a preamble to present a group of sentences or decide not to use a preamble at all. You know, using a preamble is optional. A preamble is simply an opening statement which you use to introduce your answers. It's not compulsory. Okay? Now, let's look at this example. In three sentences, take note, not phrases or subordinate clauses. In three sentences, one for each. Summarize the three negative consequences of rural urban migration discussed in the passage. Now, this is the instruction. Ask yourself, what ex exactly does the examiner want here? Three sentences, that's all. Nobody made it compulsory for you to use a preamble here, but it is, it is acceptable to use a preamble. If you don't know how to use a preamble, don't use a preamble. Just present your answers in three sentences, okay? But if you must use a preamble, you should use it correctly as follows. Now, how do you create a preamble? From the instruction where you are asked to summarize the three negative consequences of rural urban migration discussed in the passage. Now, remove summarize because that is the examiner's instruction. Now, your own answer, you want to now in present your own answer to the examiner. And then you start from here. The three negative consequences of rural urban migration discussed in the passage are, and that is exactly what we have here. 
the three negative consequences of rural urban migration discussed in the passage are, and then you put a colon, then you come with the three sentences. Sentence I, rural urban migration causes congestion in cities. I, I, facilities in the cities become inadequate for people there. I, 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 the rate of crime increases because of the increasing number of jobless youths. That's all. Now, if you are confused as to the right or the wrong way of using a preamble, all you need to do is simply to remove the preamble and then present the three sentences. That's all. Just write A, write I, 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 and present the, the sentences. Just ignore the preamble and you are just as good as someone who has used the preamble. Nobody is awarding extra marks for the use of a preamble. Instead, you lose marks when you use a preamble wrongly. So my advice, very candid advice, is that if you don't know how to use a preamble correctly, don't use a preamble. It's not compulsory, OK? OK, so let's now uh, continue. Now, one other thing you should know, don't use a preamble to present a one sentence answer. You can only use a preamble when you are presenting an answer that requires two or more sentences. Let's take an example. You are asked in one sentence, summarize the major idea of the passage in one sentence. Now, it is wrong. If you use a preamble, just as you would use a preamble in presenting three sentences, that would be wrong. Now, let's look at the wrong answer. The major idea of the passage is, then you put a colon here, corruption among our leaders. Obviously, you have gotten it absolutely wrong. Okay? Okay, so now the correct answer is as follows. The major idea of the passage is corruption among leaders without any column. Another way of doing it is to remove, you know, you have used a preamble here, but it's, it's not a preamble in the sense that you use for multiple answers. Uh, so that's why there's no colon here. This is acceptable. Or you may remove the, the, the partial colon entirely. And you simply say that there is corruption among leaders. That is a complete sentence. And all that is required is for you to use a sentence to present the idea that is needed. Now, having said that, let's now move on, OK? Rule number five is what we are going to look at right away. Mindless lifting, the almighty, almighty mindless lifting that will, you know, attract zero, zero mark, okay? That you have to be very careful uh, about this rule. The penalty is as follows. Where a candidate engages in mindless lifting award zero, you see? Very, very, very serious. Now, the remedy is avoid copying word for word from the passage, because that is what mindless lifting means. Now, it means you just download the, 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 the words in the passage the way the writer has written them, and it shows you have not summarized anything. That's why you, you score zero, because uh, copying word for word directly from the passage will make your answer useless. You have not summarized anything. You are asked to summarize, and then you are just copying word for word. Nobody asks you to copy anything. You are not asked to be a copycat, but to summarize, which requires putting on your thinking cap. Now, make sure you reconstruct the words extracted from the passage into a sentence of your own using the appropriate word reduction methods. I've already mentioned that I have uploaded a video that shows you various ways of reducing words. 
Let's take some examples of how you can avoid mindless lifting. Now, let's assume that this is what the writer has put, uh, has written in the passage. From the passage, this is exactly how it appears. Using a megaphone, the pastor was able to talk to a great multitude of people at the stadium, 19 words. Now, if you, if you copy these words exactly the way they are and present them, you score zero. Now, here is what you must do. If you extract a sentence from the, from the passage and that sentence is the answer, is one of the answers you are going to present, you must reconstruct that sentence, rewrite the sentence and use your own words as much as possible. Here is how you can do it. You can rewrite this sentence of 19 words in 13 words of your own. Now, it doesn't mean you won't use some words. There are some words in the passage that you can use, but not all of them. The key words can be used, but then you change a lot to your own words. For example, the pastor used a megaphone to address a large audience at the stadium. You have 13 words. You have restructured, you know, the sentence. Now, one of the word reduction methods is to change uh, a passive sentence to uh, an active sentence. And sometimes, you know, you can also restructure a sentence where you have a complex sentence. You can, you can use a simple sentence. This is a, a, a complex and we have changed it to a simple sentence, okay? So that is exactly what you need to do. Let's now move on, okay? Now, rule number six, lumping two points in one sentence. Now, the penalty is as follows. Where two points are made in one sentence, award marks for one and regard the other as irrelevant. On the surface, you may think, well, uh, I am not losing any marks there. But indirectly, you are. Because where you are asked to summarize a passage in three, uh, uh, to summarize some given ideas in three sentences. And then those ideas are three ideas, three main ideas. If you use one sentence to present two of those ideas, you are left with only one idea. And then if you use another sentence to present that idea, then you have only two sentences that contain the ideas required. Now, if you write another sentence that contains an irrelevant idea, that is completely useless. But then you have reduced your marks, okay? Because if you are to, uh, if you are to summarize in three sentences only, and the whole uh, summary section C carries 30 marks, it means that one sentence should give you 10 marks. So if you are able to write only two correct sentences, then you will only score 20 marks. That is if you do not commit other errors, like grammatical error that will further reduce your marks. But the bottom line is that you have already lost 10 marks because you you combine two points in one sentence okay where you are asked to write five sentences if you combine points in some of the sentences and instead of writing five you write only three for example now what happens is that you are going to lose two marks i mean you are going to lose six marks times two because 30 marks uh, divided by five sentences should give you six marks for each sentence. So if you are able to get only three sentences correctly, then you are already losing 20 marks. Uh, no, you are already losing 12 marks. Yes, you are losing 12 marks because uh, six times three will only give you 18, so you lose 12 marks because you have 30 marks in all. Now, the remedy is for you to 
make sure that you use one sentence to present each point, not two points in, in one sentence. That is dangerous. For example, in three sentences, one for each, summarize the three negative consequences of rural urban migration discussed in the passage. Now, one for each is underlined here, which means you are expected to use one sentence to present one point, all right? One negative consequence, okay? And then use another to present the other. So that's the way it is to be done. So uh, you can just go through it and see exactly how it is presented. Now, this brings us to the last but not the least rule, and that is rule number seven, writing more than the specified number of sentences. Now, the penalty is as follows. If the candidate writes more than the required number of sentences, mark the required number of sentences only. Again, on the surface, it might appear that you are not uh, losing mind. But don't forget that if you write more than the required number of sentences, then in the process, you commit other errors, some of the errors that we already discussed. And uh, of chances are that while writing, you know, without actually paying attention to the rule, you might be including unnecessary material and you might be, uh, you know, lift, you might be committing mindless lifting in the process. All these are grievous errors that will make you to lose a lot of marks. So the remedy is for you to ensure, make sure that you write the required number of sentences according to the instruction to avoid the inclusion of unnecessary material. Three sentences should be three, not four, five, or more. Now, for example, we have already seen this example, but let's go uh, uh, over it again. In three sentences, one for each, take note of one for each. Summarize the three negative consequences of rural urban migration discussed in the passage. So again, you can look through it and see that Three sentences are presented exactly in this answer. And that is what is expected from you. You don't have to uh, present four sentences or five or more or less. Where you are required to present your answers in three sentences, present your answers in three sentences. Don't write more than that. So it is very important for you to observe all these rules. And this brings us to the end of today's lesson. Many thanks for watching today's video. A big thank you to all of you out there for being part of today's episode. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, kindly subscribe to this channel. Subscribe now a way of giving us support for notification about new videos click on the bell icon you will find the bell icon click on it so that whenever a new video is uploaded you will be instantly notified if you have actually enjoyed the video like and share the video with your friends and relatives this is very important if you have any comments, leave your comments below. Any questions, any suggestions, we would gladly receive them and respond promptly and positively to them. See you in the next video. I look forward to always seeing you in the new